Hi everybody, it's Wednesday. For exactly two months last year, we were gifted with what should have been the epitome of Shondaland television programming. On May 29th, 2017, we were given Still Starcrossed, which was my favorite show last summer, and I'm a Game of Thrones fan. Still Starcrossed was what I had always wished to see as a cynical teenager that didn't want to be forced to read Romeo and Juliet in high school. It's completely what I could have asked for as a fan of historical drama. Although this show isn't so much historical as it is like well-written, well-acted, well-costumed, and well-staged fanfiction, and that's fine. It told the story of Benvolio Montague, the smartest character in Romeo and Juliet, and Rosalind Capulet, who's actually not an invention of Shonda and Betsy Beers. She's actually a character in Romeo and Juliet. She just doesn't have any lines, and really her only place in the story is for Romeo to pine over her before he sees Juliet. Romeo just has a boner for the Capulet girls. If you saw Still Star Cross, you know exactly why this show is so special. And if you didn't, well, it's not like anything new is coming out from it anyway, so how much could I really spoil for you? Still, if you would rather watch the first season on iTunes, because that's the only legal way to watch the show, without any spoilers, I understand. You should go do that, and then come back to this video. I will wait, patiently. I have no choice. You have the space bar. Okay, so if you saw the show or you just didn't care, let's dive right in. The plot of the show centered around the heightening tensions between the Montagues and the Capulets post-Romeo and Juliet, because of course the tensions are getting even higher than they were because both of the heirs are dead. So Lord Montague and Lord Capulet have to choose new heirs to inherit the money, the power, and the stupid blood feud. But ah, Prince Aeschylus of Verona realizes that the blood feud is stupid, and in order to create a sense of peace in the city, he decides he's going to force Benvolio and Rosalind to get married. But to keep the mystery of the show going, there is a whole conspiracy in Verona of people in cloaks and hoods trying to uh, keep the blood feud alive. However, because we only get seven episodes, we don't actually know why they want to do that. Lashana Lynch played Rosalind, and as you can see, she is very dark-skinned. And she was the main protagonist. Like, have you ever seen somebody so dark-skinned as the main romantic protagonist of a primetime television show? Rosalind was smart logical, devoted to her family, though mostly her younger sister Livia, strong-willed, and unwilling to sacrifice herself for the fair city of Verona, because of course this is based on a Shakespeare play and we have to repeat fair city of Verona about a hundred times in seven episodes. There wasn't much not to like about Rosalind, which isn't to say that she wasn't flawed, because she was, but it was just very easy to fall in love with her. She was impulsive and stubborn more often than not, and would of course judge any Montague just as quickly as any other Capulet. She especially hates Benvolio. Benvolio here, played by Wade Briggs, is a pretty typical dark brooding character, which isn't to say that I didn't like him, because I did. I have always loved Benvolio, again because he was the smartest one in the play. He wanted to marry for love, but his uncle Lord Montague didn't want to hear anything about it, so Benvolio spent a lot of time drinking and supporting his local brothel. I'm like, good on Benvolio for that, honestly. Support your sex workers. And you know, he's also mourning the deaths of both Mercutio, who could have possibly been his boyfriend, and Romeo, who was his cousin and his best friend, and they died within 24 hours of each other. Honestly, there wasn't a ton of nuance in his character until later in the season, which sucked because there's only seven episodes. So toward the end of the season, Benvolio shows so much emotional growth, and he is devoted, genuinely devoted to Rosalind, and really believes that they can make each other happy, and uh, we were robbed. Prince Aeschylus, played by Sterling Suleiman, was... He was dreamy. His father passed away at the beginning of the season, which is why he's returned to Verona after basically studying abroad to take the throne, which he does with his newly hardened exterior, and we learn early on that he was once involved with Rosalind. Like, he's still in love with Rosalind. Like, same. But he did leave her at, like, the worst time because her parents had just been killed. Although, to be fair to Prince Aeschylus, he was basically pushed out of Verona by his father. But Aeschylus is no longer the romantic young man that Rosalind fell in love with. He constantly puts Verona above her as far as his priorities go, but it's his job! And for most of the show, he kind of flip-flops between whether or not he wants to force Rosalind to marry Benvolio for the good of Verona, or he wants to marry her for the good of himself, but he knows that he can't because of Verona, but he doesn't want to see her unhappy because he loves her. I am a hopeless romantic and very dramatic. It's a whole thing. We were robbed. My favorite character on the show was Princess I Have No Need for Men and Their Sons, Isabella, who served looks 
every scene she was in. She initially came off as the cold-hearted bitch and couture that I desperately want to be, but as the show went on, we got to see how multifaceted her character was. She goes to Venice in place of Aeschylus because the Venetian ambassador was killed in Verona, and so she's trying to broker peace, and the Doge of Venice won't give her peace unless she sleeps with him. So, in order to not be literally raped, she pretends she's on her period and it grosses him out. And yeah, that's a weird situation to put in a show, but my point here is that Princess Isabella is strong, composed, and super cunning in getting herself out of that situation. And she accepts the help of other women. She's not saved by a man. She's saved by the suggestions of the girl that was supposed to be her girlfriend later in the season. We were robbed not only of this super dramatic, super Shondalandy Shakespearean show, but we were robbed of gay Shakespeare. Everyone's favorite historical drama villain, or in some cases, the sketchy half-brother with possible ties to magic, or just the idiot that sleeps with Henry VIII's fifth wife, Torrance Coombs plays Count Paris. Except this Count Paris is evil, because he's part of the conspiracy to continue the blood feud in Verona, I assume, just because it'll benefit him, because it'll make it easier for him to take over Verona if Aeschylus is busy trying to keep the Capulets and the Montagues from tearing each other apart. But I can only assume these things, because the show was cancelled. Paris was ambitious and cunning and just about two steps ahead of everybody else. He seduced Livia, Rosalind's younger sister, and then uses her as leverage against Rosalind. We let my boy Willie Shakes down, and no, Mr. Lamole, my 11th and 12th grade AP English teacher, I am not sorry for calling him Willie Shakes. He would have thrived on the drama and the romance and the intrigue and the gaze of Still Star Crossed. It promised to be a will they, won't they story with nuance and a diverse cast that puts other casts to shame, especially period drama casts. I did not even touch on some of the most interesting subplots in this show, like the fact that Lady Capulet is slowly descending into a mental breakdown over the loss of her most beloved daughter whose death does not make sense to her. I'm not even a fan of Lady Capulet's, but the funeral scene, especially on her part, is so difficult to watch in the best way. And there's also the fact that the Capulets have been building a cathedral for almost two generations and they have run out of money and so the cathedral changes hands a couple times throughout the show between the Montagues and the Capulets, and it's never actually gonna get built because nothing gets done in Verona, and also because the show got cancelled. Can you believe how robbed we've been? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite part of Still Starcross was if you watched it, and if not, what your favorite part of either this video was or like Romeo and Juliet. If you're not already subscribed to The Princess and the Scrivener, please do so down below, especially if you'd like to see more videos on Disney, intersectional feminism, pop culture critiques, and more! The Scrivener. We'll see you next week.